In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. May the love and mercy of God be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you demonstrated extraordinary forgiveness to a public sinner. She in turn demonstrated to you her extraordinary love. Must you grant us the same spirit of gratitude to always be thankful to you for the many sins you have forgiven us. Amen. A reading from the Holy Ghost according to Luke chapter 7 verses 36 to 50. At that time one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat at table. And behold, a woman of the city, who was a sinner, when she learned that he was sitting at table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment. And standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears, and wiped them with the hair of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, What is it, teacher? A certain creditor had two debtors, one owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he forgave them both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon answered, The one I suppose to whom he forgave more. And he said to him, You have judged rightly. Then turning towards the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Thereof I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But he who is forgiven little, loves little. And he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. Then those who were at table with him began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear good listener, the theme I have chosen to guide us for our meditation is Extraordinary forgiveness calls for extraordinary love. My dear good listener, in the Gospel text we have heard, we meet two things extraordinary forgiveness and extraordinary love. I'm sure that you and me at the first instance, given a chance like the Pharisee who hosts Jesus, we would also have judged the actions of this woman who instead of sitting on table with others, prostrates herself at the feet of Jesus and begins to wet them with tears and covers them with kisses. It must be a surprise to you and me especially who have no culture of kisses. However, as for me, having had an opportunity to study in Europe, I was able to understand this culture. For the Europeans and indeed the Jews, a kiss is a sign of a greeting. It is a sign of expressing love. The way we do with a handshake or an embrace. That is why you will understand St. Paul in his second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 12, who tells the Corinthians, greet one another with the holy kiss. Therefore, to understand this text, you and me need to enter into the culture of the Jews. Otherwise, you miss the point, like the host Pharisee lost it. In the gospel text, the woman demonstrates an extraordinary love because as Jesus reveals to the host Pharisee, she had been forgiven her many sins. The woman's reputation in the village is a very bad one. She manages to be a public sinner. Even Jesus in verse 47 confirms the magnitude of her sinfulness. He says to the host Pharisee, Simon, so I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven. 
Hence, she has shown great love. Therefore, this gospel passage demonstrates the magnitude of both Jesus' forgiveness and the woman's gratitude to Jesus. Jesus clearly forgives the woman not because of her extravagant and her seemingly scandalous expressions of love, which the host Pharisee judged wrongly. No, instead, from Jesus' short parable about two debtors who have been forgiven, it is the debtor who has been forgiven a much bigger debt who will love more the creditor. Jesus emerges to be that extraordinary creditor who forgives the woman of her much bigger debt of sin. My dear good listener, like the woman in the story, how many sins has Jesus forgiven you? Do you ever show him gratitude like this woman? Or like the host Pharisee, Simon, you have the eyes of judging others. The gospel text you have heard seems to suggest that prior to her coming, the woman had met Jesus and forgave her her many sins. And like the other Samaritan man, out of the ten who had been all healed of leprosy by Jesus, he returns to give him thanks. The woman, likewise, returns to Jesus to give him thanks for having relieved her of her burden of sins. Only Jesus accepts you the way you are. You may have had a scandalous past. You might be considered a public sinner. It may even result to be true that you are a sinner. But the truth is, open your heart and Jesus will forgive you your many sins and you will be healed by your faith. Secondly, for us who consider ourselves righteous, like the Pharisee who hosts Jesus, but also interior judges him wrongly because of accepting the sinner to touch him, did you realize what Jesus tells Simon? When I entered your house, you did not give me water for my feet. You did not give me a kiss. You did not anoint me. It turns out, therefore, to us that the Pharisee who hosts Jesus did not accord Jesus the hospitality and respect that a guest deserved according to the culture of the time. After heavy work on a dusty road, the host would give to his visitor water to clean his feet. This the Pharisee never did. What do we see? We see that the Pharisee lacked love and never understood the person whom he had hosted, that he is the Lord and the King of mercy. The Pharisee saw no need of forgiveness and never received forgiveness, but the public sinner did. She is like the repentant thief on the cross who alone entered into heaven immediately just because he recognized his sins but also accepted the medicine for his sins and that medicine was Jesus hanging on the cross besides him. My dear good listener, do you recognize your many sins and are you making a step to seek for forgiveness from Jesus or like the Pharisee, the only thing you have is a judging eye towards your neighbors, wanting to remove a speck from their eyes, yet you have a log in yours? My dear good listener, St. Faustina herself got such an experience. Let us read her diary number 1528 and listen to what she says and then what Jesus responds to her. When I complained to the Lord Jesus about a certain person saying, Jesus, how can this person pass judgment like that, even about an intention? The Lord answered, Do not be surprised. That soul does not even know her own self. So, how could she pass a fair judgment on another soul? My dear good listener, are you such a soul Jesus is referring to? My dear good listener, let us ask Jesus to rescue us from all this and continue to pray on this seventh day of our novena that God may stop the spread of coronavirus and may convert the hearts of the people in Masaka and in Kampala and other places who are going about killing people with pangas and other objects. And may we pray that Radio Maria Kabale may have the support it needs to pay off all the debts it has incurred during this coronavirus pandemic since it is not a commercial radio, and that it may extend to other places it has not yet reached. I still ask you to join me on Sunday 26th of this month on the same radio from 8 p.m. to midnight, soliciting for your kind generosity to help Radio Maria. May God bless you, a cheerful giver. May saints, Cornelius and Cyprian, whose memorial we celebrate today, pray for us. The Lord be with you, and may the God of love and mercy bless you.
Father, Son, and Spirit. Have mercy on us and on the whole world.